Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with uh, my live reaction for Tower of God Chapter 405 or Season 2 Episode 325. Uh, so we're actually getting into a lot of action-y stuff right now. We've got, um, we've got Evankel's group starting to fight against the uh, Zahard's army group and all pairing off. Yuri hasn't entered the battlefield yet, which will be kind of interesting because I'd like to see if she's going to keep trying to play it safe, sort of. Or if she's just going to have to show her true colors and be like, you know, I want to help Bomb survive. Because there is still a lot of conflict there where she and Evan are still loyal to Zahard. She just wants to live and escape herself as well as Bomb and her allies. She's definitely not on FUG's side, so to speak. Um, and in addition to that, Yu Han Sung ran off to... Um, to save the prisoners. So I'm assuming because Funsa called Drac is with the prisoners, we're gonna get Funsa called Drac versus Yuan Sung, which will be nice. Uh, there's still a bunch of stuff we haven't seen, like Kalavans coming in eventually. Uh, and the same goes for the other side, the regular side of things. Bomb, Misang, and Andrasi are going off to try to rescue the prisoners too. Um, while well, Hockney and Rack are trying to escape with Kuhn. Uh, Warian might be going with Hockney and Rack. I guess we'll see. Uh, Lee Seong and Lee Sowa are helping out. And there's still, again, a lot of things we haven't seen. We haven't seen Team Ship or Team, um, Team Zsa Zsa come into play really yet. Or any of those tons of regulars that we were introduced to. Or any of the uh, people, the cloaked, mysterious figures from all of those, uh, that segment of panels that we had a while back. So, uh, still a lot left to see, and we're starting back off with, uh, Mising punching the purple eye brother guy in the face. Uh, so Mising punches the guy in the face, uh, sends him flying backwards. And we have, uh, the observer looking, you, you little punk, slow her down, purple eye special skill, slow eye. And then, of course, uh, Misang uses Reflection, and I believe we've seen her use that before. Alright. Huh? Wait a minute. Why am I getting slower? And then uh, she nails the uh, glasses guy, and both of the Purple Eye Brothers completely hobbited, completely demolished by Misang. Nice shot, Misang. Way to go, girl, says Andrasi. <laughs> Should we stop her, says Bob. And then she's breathing heavily. Yes, I'm stronger now. Am I strong enough to save them, Veal? And technically, she had this power all along, she just wasn't able to use it, because uh, we saw she had the power to overwhelm basically everyone in the uh, Battle X Gamble in her, um, in her segment, and it took uh, Wang Nen, Prince, and Dakraft, or at least I believe it was the three of them, it took them working together to finally beat her. Am I strong enough to save them, Veal? From now on, I don't want anyone to die because of me ever again. And he looks surprised. And he looks down. Okay, so this must mean he knows about, um, Prince and Akraptor. Okay, let's go save them together. At least I'm assuming from that look. 44th floor, the last station, Evankel. In, uh, Evankel 3. Stop, Evankel. What's the leader of an entire floor doing here, says Alpathian. How dare you oppose King Zahard. Alright. Now, I finally have some decent opponents. And, uh, Elpathian senses something. A hole's being blown in one of the ships, it looks like. Or maybe he's just looking around at all these ships being destroyed. I heard that you disappeared from the floor of the test, but I never imagined that you would come here. So it's true that you were in cahoots with F.U.G., and then uh, she responds, FUG or not, there wouldn't have been a problem if you hadn't messed with my servants. Isn't that because, or, isn't that because you didn't deal with those irregulars properly in the first place? Why are you standing up to King Zahard? You're only inviting yourself, or you're only inviting death to yourself quicker. Death? You make it sound like you people are gods or something. How funny. Sorry, but I managed to survive from hell. I'm not afraid of death anymore. If anything scares me, it would be, well, this flame being extinguished. If my body were to stop burning, and I wanted to live under someone else's thumb like people like you, what's the point of living like that, you idiots? That would really be death to me. We're not getting anywhere with talking. 
Division Commander Number One. Yes, sir. Tell the troops in the rear to get into formation. We're going to subdue that monster until the squadron commander gets here. Attention, rear troops. And now we have Spearman, 4th class servant, Shakul. Get into position now and surround Devonkel. And of course, the whatever class servant translation I heard might be actually a military rank type thing, so I'm not sure if that's the best wording for it, or if there's another wording that would make it more clear what they are. But uh, we got Drillhead Man down here. <laughs> Try to stay in your positions. Wave Controller. Third class servant, Chatanoa. Cute. And back me up and intercept her attacks from a distance. Close combat is extremely dangerous, so I'll handle it myself. Don't come near. Damn it. I wish I could help the division commander and K the scrub lord. Since the squadron commander isn't here, I'll be the fisherman. Now we have fisherman, second class servant, Ari Bright Sharon. Okay, so this is again. If she's a division commander and second class servant, then the other second class servant was the guy with all the tattoos. I forget his name already. But you guys know who I'm talking about. The guy that went after Evankel. And uh, we were talking before, and I think it's going to be in the hot Q&A, where uh, people had asked where that fourth division was, and I said I think it might be the group that was sent after Evankel because the translations of whatever class servant, see, or I heard that they were actually n not really mistranslated, but they were kind of more like military ranks. So I feel like uh, that guy could be the commander of the other division. And uh, Tinker Yolche was the girl's name. Maybe she's like the assistant commander of that division or something. Maybe she's like the uh, K or the Dorian of that division. Because she was a third class servant. And I would assume that the third class ones then are the next rank down, the uh, assistant commanders or maybe the regimental commanders or whatever. And then the fourth class servants are just the scrub lord commanders. <laughs> So, uh, that must mean first class servants would be like Elpathian himself, if second is, uh, his second is Ari Brycharen. But either way. Shall we get started, sir? Go ahead. Light bear, first class servant, Elpathian. Of course. And I like that we're actually having a team, really. Uh, we're actually seeing the positions come into play with a fisherman, spear bear, light bear, scout, you know. Or wave controller, not scout. Uh, the wave controller was that girl with the animal ears. Alright, so Alpathian vanishes somewhere as Ari Bright Sharon moves in. I really like Ari Bright Sharon's design. And we have a slash from uh, Evan Kell meeting her. You're pretty fast, and you pack a pretty good punch. Impressive. Thanks for the compliment. And now, uh,. She gets surrounded by these twisty spear things, ass assuming they're from Drillhead Man. Shakul style spear skill. A hundred spirals. That's actually really cool. Too bad his design is really goofy. Because that is actually really cool for a spear bear technique. Inferno. Flaming ecstasy. And she burns through them all. Alright. That little brat. She makes no sound when she moves. Ari style needle. Lethal move. Fairy light. And that's a... Oh my god, look at Evankel blocking it. That is a really cool looking attack. That's a really cool panel. We see this huge attack coming down as Evankel swings and blocks it in the bottom. And is... Is that Evankel's sword? Yeah, Evankel's sword is destroyed by, uh... By Sharon's needle. My sword. Did she just aim for the handle? She's er, She has such a refined, confident way of handling that weapon. I envy those skills of hers. Ari family is actually doing something. Holy hell. Inferno. Flaming ecstasy. And we see uh, Sharon dodging away from it all. Alright. And then it looks like she finally gets hit, I think. Or no, she gets grabbed by the hand of that thing, it looks like. The Susanoo. Seeing how you move so quietly and handle your needle like that. Are you from the Ari family? I've heard the Ari family doesn't like wars. Then what are you doing here? <laughs> We're learning about the Ari family? Color me surprised again. You know about us, huh? We do whatever we can to prevent wars. And another thing, the Ari family is related to Ari A. 
We don't get real swords like the REA family, but we always carry another kind of sword within us. Like this. Holy hell, and she just has unlimited blade <laughs> unlimited blade works here. Like this. Ari Bright Sharon's Guardian Sword, Marine Fairy Swords. And they all start stabbing through the Sasanuo. I was not imagine I was not imagining Ari Bright Sharon to be able to handle Evankel like this. And now well Pathian has like a shit ton of lighthouses. And I think this is really cool because we've got introduced to all the positions and stuff, but we've never seen a team of like high rankers all working together. It's all been like individual fights. So it's interesting seeing what can happen when you have a high ranker fisherman being supported by a high ranker spear bearer and high ranker light bearer. But uh, Alpathian has a shit ton of lighthouses. Wow, she says. Stay right where you are. Alpathian's lighthouse control. Oh my god. Wall of despair. Holy hell, and he just forms all of these shields to try to, um, to try to confine her. Holy hell. And now we have a flashback? Oh my god, this chapter, just one thing after another. Please, just kill me. There's no rush. I'm gonna kill you anyway, because I like killing. Oh, and we have Evan Kill meeting you on Sun. Is that so? You're very strange. Aren't you, er, aren't you afraid of dying? Every skilled ranker I've killed so far has begged me to spare their life. The closer a person thinks they are to being immortal, the more they fear death. Some, some of them even cried like babies. I go around from battle to battle just to see them make fools of themselves. What are you afraid of? What? You're not afraid of death, so I want to know what scares you. Okay. Unlike other rankers, I've never imagined that I'd live forever. So I'm not scared of dying, but someone I met before once told me they're more afraid of their rage fading than dying. I think I'm the same way. What I fear more than death is the emotions I have fading away. This thirst for change, this firm belief that I'll change the tower, this desire to achieve my dreams without relying on power, it scares me to think of all that disappearing. You're afraid of losing your desires. It sounds strange, but for some reason... I think I'm a bit I think I'm a bit afraid of that too. This is nothing. What is it that you want to achieve er so what is it that you want to achieve so badly? Well, you think you can tie me down? Don't be silly. I wanna usher in a new era. Now, I'm gonna show you guys. Inferno, Festival of Flames, in this tower, what real hell is like. Partial release of an ancient power. Yo, the Sasanoa is coming out. Division Commander, there are warships coming from the station, and Chionhi's being alerted. I think the regulars are in them. Alright. I kinda saw this coming. Are they really here? And of course this makes sense why it's impossible for uh, regulars to survive on the battlefield when you have these flames coming from that battle that uh, Evankel's having just burning the nearby ships. I kind of saw this coming. Are they really here? I guess we'll find out soon. And we see uh, Bomb, Misang, and Andrasi in their ship. Th or whether those regulars are acting brave for no reason, or whether they really are threats. That was a good chapter. Like, not only was the Misang stuff cool at the beginning, then the fight between Sharon, Drillhead, and... Uh, what was the... Shakul was the drill head, but what was... Elpathian, duh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, the fight between them and Evankel is really good, and we even got an Evankel and Yuan Sung flashback. And Yuan Sung's kind of, uh... His goal is to change the tower, which he's kind of going about through bomb. He's living uh, vicariously through a student, really. Uh, but that's really, really cool. I loved everything in this chapter. We got RE family development, which is very cool. It's very different. Uh, again, I wasn't expecting Sharon to be able to handle Evankel so well, and obviously Evankel is rank 60. She's way stronger. Uh, but just the fact that she was able to stand up to her that much is surprising. Uh, so it was cool to see. Even though with this partial release, it seems like she'll be able to uh, fight against Elpathian and uh, Sharon much more easily. And I guess we learned their positions as well. 
Um, Sharon said she'd be the fisherman, but that kind of makes you think that maybe she could fill in other positions. Uh, or else why would she have to name what position she would be? And uh, Elpathian himself is um, a light bear, which is interesting to note. Uh, that he's a very high-ranked light bear, being a uh, being an assistant squadron commander. Uh, but it also is worth noting that the uh, the servant ranks. So we know that an assistant division commander is, or an assistant squadron commander is a first-rank servant. So that means the second-rank servants are like uh, Sharon, Chionhi, and uh, we all we also saw was he Volkner? No, that's the guy from Pokemon. Something like that. Something like Volkner. Or maybe it's just Volker or Yolker. Something like that. But, uh, yeah, I think it's Yolker. But, uh, that guy was also a second rank servant. So that makes me think he is the division commander for the other division. And we were also introduced to Tinker Yolche, and I think she was a third rank servant. So I'm going to assume that means she's the assistant division commander, uh, for that division. And we have divisions one and two. So either division three or four. That's the, I would assume that's the commander and the uh, the assistant commander of that division would be uh, Tinker Yolche and Yolker. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I really enjoyed this episode. It was really good. I can't wait to do a review of it. I really hope my audio didn't mess up because this was such a good one. Um, review will hopefully be tomorrow, but I have a lot of things to do. There's a hot and a I've been working on that I'll probably get up today. Um... I'm hoping today, so uh, you'll probably see a hot Q&A with a big long Tower of God discussion uh, before you see the review. The review will either be tomorrow, probably, or there's a chance it could be Wednesday if I have too much going on, uh, which isn't really that big a deal because um, if it is Wednesday, it just gives me another day to take notes and stuff. Uh, so that's it. Thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like if you did like the video, comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts and reaction and all that. Subscribe for more Tower of God, much more on the channel. Sorry, I'm really stuffed up, too. I've been feeling like I have maybe a cold, maybe it's just allergies. So sorry if I've been really stuffed up throughout all this um, and nasally. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. And if you want to link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us on Discord about anything, uh, then just ask and I'll give you a link. Free and open for anyone. That's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.